and welcome to Slide Review. So this week we are looking at Derm Path again. We will be talking about a handful of non-melanocytic -melan lesions. Wow, first sentence and I've already messed up, but okay, we're just going with it. So non-melanocytic lesions, as always, we start with our standard disclaimer, which you can peruse at your leisure. If you have questions about it or questions about anything, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. We have both Twitter handles down below as well as the link to all our videos. And relatively simple. So these are all going to be epidermal tumors, which makes sense. We're talking about germ path. So whether they're proliferative and benign lesions or are they pre-malignant and malignant tumors. So starting off with our proliferative lesions and benign tumors, this is case one. All right, so it's a black, mac. it's a black, Macule. One of these days I will get these proper derm term right, but um, it's, you know, melanocytic, uh, well circumscribed. I would say pretty symmetrical. Yeah. It's okay. not really like irregular, it's kind of circular. Right. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, somewhat of a buzzword. Coin like lesion. Pressed on appearance. Oh, stuck, stuck on. Stuck, okay. stuck on. Yeah. Oh, so you guys already know what it is. Okay, well, <laughs> okay. the slide. So now you get to tell me everything about the slide. Well, okay, so we have skin. It's, Good. Um, yeah. <laughs> the blue part is the epidermis. Yes. And it looks acanthotic. It's kind of thicker. Um, we have two pieces. We're going to focus on one piece first, and then we'll go to the other piece. All right, let's go in. So they didn't give us too much skin. It doesn't get really deep. So good thing this is very superficial lesion. But the key thing here is these wonderful little things here, these keratin, these pseudo horn cysts, I think we call them. Pseudo yeah, yeah, keratin pseudo cysts. Keratin pseudo cysts that are very characteristic. And it's pretty symmetrical both sides. Yep. Yeah. So, stuck on appearance, that's buzzword <laughs> from the steps, or USMLE or MK, no, USMLE. So, it's an SK, seborrheic keratosis. Yeah, one of those fun words, this is a seborrheic keratosis. And then, this is, um, yeah, we've got to check the other piece, which is very much the same thing. I have to be a good pathologist, I have to check both pieces. And right. we have to check the other profile, technically, but we're going to just skip that for the sake of time. <laughs> Yeah, anyone who watched the challenge case review that I uh, did earlier this week is going, wait, for the most part she looked at one piece, yes, in the interest of time, um, but to be a good pathologist, look at everything. So these are incredibly common, they occur in middle-aged to elderly patients, in fact they occur in about one in five, uh, and we also learn all the time in like medical school and again for our boards, uh, RISE exams, etc., the lesser trilocine, uh, which is many seborrheic keratoses appearing all at once, and that's a sign of an internal malignancy, gastric adeno being the most common. Um, so these tend to occur anywhere except the palms and soles. Okay, so remember when we were talking about dermatoses and rashes, we said you want to pay attention to what doesn't occur on the face, what doesn't occur on palms and soles. Well, these don't occur on the palms and soles as well. And they are well-circumscribed flesh-colored to brown-black plaques with that greasy, coin-like, stuck-on appearance. They are very soft and friable. Um, they may or may not be verruciform or wart-like, and they can also be flat with keratotic plugs. Okay, and again, they can be solitary or multiple. Um, and on microscopy, as was pointed out, they are acanthotic lesions, and they are either exophytic, which means they grow out, or endophytic, meaning they grow down. They are symmetric with well-defined borders, and they are very basal in appearance, which means they're very blue, and uh, obviously it's involving squamous cells. Um, you will see orthohyperkeratosis, so again, uh, not parakeratosis, but orthokeratosis, which gives you the starry sky appearance, and you may or may not see pseudohorn cysts, and those pseudohorn cysts are keratin-filled invaginations, okay, and these are very characteristic. So in the bottom picture, you can see that we have a lot of examples of these uh, pseudo horn cysts, okay? They may or may not be hyperpigmented, they may or may not have inflammation, and if they're inflamed, 
you may or may not see parakeratosis. So there's a lot of what ifs with these lesions. And there are many, many variants which are all in your handout because we are not even gonna attempt to go over them all. Differential, as you can see, it's huge, okay? Um, but the main point with these is you would expect to see the pseudomonas cysts and not really atypia that would push you into uh, like an AK or, sorry, uh, actinic keratosis. Um, for treatment, often they're fully excised on biopsy. As we saw in our case, we had nice regular epidermis on the edges, or you will see when you spend more time on it, and the prognosis is excellent, and very, very rarely these give rise to either a squamous cell carcinoma in situ or squamous cell carcinoma, which would be the invasive variant. And a few more pictures of seborrheic keratosis. Moving on to case two. Ooh. Warts. <laughs> warts, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not much else to say about them, right? Lots of warts. Alright. Uh -huh. So, this is an exophytic lesion, it looks like it's kind of being pulled up. Um, it's kind of encanthotic, there's um, hyperkeratosis. Um, kind of looks like it's pinching in down at the base, sort of, yep. here, which is a sign that you're doing the root cutting. You can look into the individual cells. There's okay. Can you show acanthosis? Uh, sorry? Acanthosis. So like this is acanthosis. So acanthosis refers to epidermis that's too thick. So it's it's like um this hypertrophic. Maybe here will be pretty good. Like it's thick. Thicker than yeah. like this would be normal and then this is sort of acanthotic. Uh, probably like over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sort of, you know, that's just, you know. Yeah. So it's it's all relative to, to where you are because if you were looking at on the palms or soles, mm -hmm. the skin will be thicker. Um, areas that are calloused tend to be thicker as well. Yeah, it, it's just a generic term. It sounds fancy. But it sounds fancy. <laughs> well, it's an actual it, term. It it's it a pathologic is. term, but we really like to use it. We're very attached yes. to it. Yes. Well, okay. <laughs> some people, not all. <laughs> Der <laughs> Today we are all dermatopathologists and, and want to be dermatopathologists. So you look at the epithelium <laughs> here. You know these cells don't look right. They're too. They're not maturing properly. Like they got all the way up and they still look really big. The nuclei, um, the nuclear features are not projecting as well. So, but okay. may, there may be like this. Here's like, this might be a double nuclei. That's never a good sign. You know it's atypical. So, you know, that's another feature. This is like, there's some dysplastic looking epidermis, epidermal features here. Um, and then there's this, these sort of, like even the keratin's kind of like on top of each other. I know there's a term for it, but I don't remember what's the term. For the, um, the well, you have like the, the steepling and stuff, yeah. and uh, where it kind of piles on top of like these projections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you should look at everything. And then the granular layer looks a little more prominent, but I'm not, I don't know if that's actually something we look for. That yes. is something is to it? look for. Okay. Yes. Awesome. I do remember something vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I actually want you to stop here. Yeah. So these cells are very characteristic. So when they say, uh, like you're looking at something warty, um, so those are your perinuclear halos. Sometimes you can have keratohyaline, keratinohyaline, hyaline okay. okay, yeah, somebody's gonna, <laughs> there's gonna be a comment about that, I know it. I can feel it already. <laughs> Look at this, um, this beauty here. Yeah, so what you have here is like, this is like granular there, and it's coming down. So all this, these dark splotches, super dark splotches, it protects better on the screen. Um, but that's all related to your granular layer. So you have this hypergranulosis, which if you guys remember from last week, we had lesions that tend to lose that granular layer. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. This is a Veruca this vulgaris. This is a Veruca, yes. Vulgaris being common, common Veruca. <laughs> Uh, and the other thing you tend to see in the keratin layer, which we do see in this case, um, is you'll have blood. 
thoroughly hemorrhage within the keratin layer. Um, so all these things, you have the, the uh, steepling of like the perikeratosis on top of the peaks, all that's very characteristic. But yes, this is group of algaris, or BD, also known as the common wart, uh, palmo plantar warts, uh, flat warts, or bruca plana, very, very common, and they can occur in any age. They're often related to HPV infection, but not the HPV that we associate with cervical cancer, okay? Um, so your most common type, types being less than 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 10. Um, they are often grow very rapidly, and then they suddenly stop growing. They, they reach a size that they're happy at, and they stay there. Um, again, these can kind of occur anywhere, but they like to occur on like the hands, palms and soles, the face, um, and they are these small flesh-colored papular or plaque-like lesions. On microscopy, again, like we saw with separate keratosis, they can be exophytic or endophytic. They are papillomatous, which papillomatous means that they have those fibrovascular pores. Um, Hypergranulosis, as we saw in our case, dense, dense hyperkeratosis and perikeratosis that, again, tends to steeple above uh, the, the papillary projections. You may or may not see hemorrhage that's within the uh, keratin layer, so intracorneal hemorrhage, and there tends to be this inward pointing of the base, and that is called towing. So the bottom picture is showing you that towing, where the base of the lesion is pulled towards the center. Um, you will have superficial keratinocytes with perinuclear halos, that should be one line, as well as uh, keratohyaline <laughs> granules. I will get that word someday. Um, and they tend to be really prominent, okay? Um, so the open arrow on the top picture is showing you those granules, whereas the closed arrow is showing you the halos. Uh, and uh, palmar plantar warts, so warts are occurring on the palms of the hands, the soles of the feet, tend to have those really prominent inclusions, which are also kind of basophilic, even though in the picture that I have, the picture example to show you, they look a little more eosinophilic, but that's what you're looking for. You may or may not see inflammation with these lesions, and if you do have inflammation, you can often expect to see reactive atypia with that, and you may or may not have mitoses, but these should be combined, confined to the basal layer of the epidermis. And this is particularly important if it's inflamed or irritated because, again, you're going to have that atypia. So you want to make sure that you have basal or mitotic figures and it's not going all the way through and making you worry about, is this a carcinoma in situ? Differential, well, it's a little smaller, but it still includes a lot of things that look like warts. So whether it's Bruchus keratosis, separate keratosis, there is Bruchus carcinoma, which is relatively rare. Um, and your treatment for these lesions, while well, they tend to either cut them out with clear margins or they do topical therapy. Um, so this is often where they'll talk about uh, freezing warts off as well. Some people will say things like apple cider vinegar, lots of different things you can do for warts. Uh, for prognosis for these is excellent unless these patients are immunocompromised. Remember, these are related to HPV virus and there is rare instances of cutaneous carcinoma occurring in immunocompromised patients. So um, again, this isn't necessarily uh, something that you need to worry about, but if there's anything in the history that should be flagged for immunocompromised, like whether they're transplant, uh, HIV status, um, you, or chemotherapy, you want to make sure the clinician's aware of that, even though typically they know what they're looking at when they take it off for biopsy. And, as with a lot of things, they can also spontaneously regress. So, Bruca vulgaris, the common wart. Case, oh, right, I forgot I did these for this lecture. So, um, in this lecture, we had tried doing something a little different. Uh, so, I took the main uh, points for as many of these entities as I could and tried to put together a little uh, quick cheat sheet. So the colors correspond with the arrows to kind of show you the different features that you can look at. Now we're moving on. So for malignant lesions and malignant tu tumors, this is case three. Okay, so I can see a small, like, fat fuel of black. Sure. And it's 
and it, it looks like so it's like more like sun exposed area yeah it's on the back of the hand yeah so I don't know if I can see some scaling you can tell me better is there scaling like uh, not really you get little yeah it's not it's kind of hard to tell it almost yeah. looks more like an ashar or a scab yeah kind of. yeah so let's see how it looks like all right i love the enthusiasm <laughs> okay so we can start it anyway right yeah you got four levels of the same tissue okay so is this something that is something is it like a keratin pearl or something? Yeah, so that that is keratin, and that would make you think of squamous cell carcinoma. How about seborrheic keratosis? Uh, it kind of yeah. looks like a pseudo cyst, right? Yeah. But yes, that's like keratin. Like pseudo cyst. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And what else can we see? So we're gonna go closer. Okay. So from distance, like I, there's like some cells here and some are here. But I don't see anything majorly typical. Um, these cells are retaining their nuclei, so there is parakeratosis. Um, are they? So parakeratosis is within the very superficial layers. Most oh. of the superficial keratin has kind of been, looks like maybe like uh, rubbed off. Um, so what we're seeing there, I think, is like relatively normal granular layer still. Um, okay. There's maybe a little loss of, of maturity, but yeah, the, the basal or half of the epidermis is more where you want to look in this. Okay, yeah, they, they look more atypical, like they don't look normal, right? These charity. Maybe. Uh, like I would just like keep moving around. Yeah, I think those are two cells side by side, but yeah. they kind of look like one, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I could find. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm no, no. Yeah. This, this is a great thing. So this is where everyone kind of starts out, is going, I don't know, it's blue up top and yeah. pink on the bottom. You got all these p-shaped things going on <laughs> i don't know um does our does our senior want to help her out a little bit well it's just the uh, basal layer doesn't look right <laughs> it's it's bigger though. it's kind of looks like it's kind of jutting out a little um okay yeah and it's i don't know it's kind of atypical like it's you know they're kind of looks like they're pushing upwards but they're not in the normal kind of Mm -hmm. So there's like these little buds almost. Okay. Yeah. Is now when I can also tell you that you have multiple pieces of tissue that you can look at? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Remember, a good pathologist I always look at all pieces <laughs> of tissue. <laughs> and if, if worse ca comes to worse, uh, the, 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 that is why I am here. Uh-huh. And these are subtle lesions, but these are the kind of things that you have to spend time looking for. So you picked a good one, but a hard one to start off with. Mm -hmm. So there is some parakeratosis here. Yeah, do you yeah. see these guys, all these yeah. nuclei? Mm -hmm. So that's parakeratosis. Because mm -hmm. normally we shouldn't have nuclei up in the superficial keratin, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So you just knew what we hadn't seen already. <laughs> I just knew about the <laughs> lesion, how it would look like. Yeah. I mean, the basal cell there, it's not as prominent, but it does show. It's yeah. not Is normal. there mitosis? They're kind of is larger. This, is this mitosis? So that mm -hmm. is a mitotic figure. It might be, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's at the basal layer, yeah. right? So that's okay. Yeah. But, like, these cells are just, they're too big. They're too high up. Yeah. You don't like that. That's a little unusual. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where my dermatology is. <laughs> all right. So one of the things that I say all the time is kind of zoom out a little bit. You kind of want to be at mid-power. Mm -hmm. So about at this level, 
and you kind of just want to scan up and down the pieces of tissue because I think you'll find something catches your eye. Maybe not on this piece, but just keep it at like that level and just kind of zoom around mm -hmm. a little bit. See it now? Yeah, the hair follicle. That is a hair follicle, yes. So it's involving that. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> but what about all this stuff beside it? All this stuff here. Looks, yeah, that's better. More atypical. That right? looks kind of funny, right? Yeah. yeah. Less organized, bigger. Yeah. I, I did tell you, you picked a hard one to start with. <laughs> yeah, it was more normal there. Yeah. Most of it. But these are the kind of things that you're looking for in skin lesions. So these are the kind of things that like we will hunt mm -hmm. on the sides. You know, if we're not looking for eosinophils, we're looking for stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this sort of atypia, any ideas what we're looking at? We're in sun damaged skin. It's a flat lesion. Actinic keratosis? Bingo. This is actinic keratosis. So it can be very subtle atypia. And again, another very common thing. This is also known as solar keratosis. It occurs in older adults, men more than women, and probably because, you know, uh, guys may be out uh, mowing the lawn and stuff like that. So like, uh, think arms, ears, nose, um, and uh, Caucasians and fair-skinned individuals are uh, more commonly affected. It's related to UV damage, particularly UVB, and this induces mutations in your DNA, particularly P53, okay? So sun exposed areas like we were talking about, and the lesions tend to be either papular or plaques. They can be scaly, and they're usually pretty small. They're usually less than one centimeter in size, and often there are multiple. And why? Because the areas that tend to be sun exposed tend to be relatively large and they may be on multiple areas of the body at the same time. On microscopy, you're going to see atypical keratinocytes in the basilar third of the epithelium, which is what we saw. We had to hunt for it a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> um, the apical cells will show basilar budding, so we did hit that. And there will be nuclear enlargement, hyperchromasia, which means that the nuclei get very dark. You'll have prominent nucleoli, so almost like an eye staring right back at you. And you'll also have abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm because, again, these are keratinocytes. There's often mitotic figures, and you may or may not see parakeratosis, but it's relatively common to be overlying the lesion. So if you're not sure if you have actin keratosis, but you have this one er area that kind of looks funny and it has parakeratosis, that's a pretty good sign that you're in the right area. And uh, what you can often see is this alternating red-blue uh, layers of parakeratosis, and this creates what is called like the checkerboard pattern. So you can kind of appreciate it in the bottom photo where you have uh, that very blue area, and then immediately over top of it, it's pink, and uh, it kind of creates this, yeah, checkerboard pattern. Um, and you'll often have orthokeratosis or uh, hyperkeratosis, that basket weave pattern over top of your follicles and eccrine ducts. You may or may not have hypogranulosis. So remember, with our Baruca, we saw hypergranulosis. With actin keratosis, you can sometimes see hypogranulosis. Um, and what you will not see is, well, typically, <laughs> there's always exceptions to the rule, but more often than not, you won't see follicular and adnexal duct involvement. So we saw that hair follicle, but it was not involved by the actinic keratosis. Well, we finally hit some IHC that may prove helpful. So your positive stains would be your keratins, your MART1, and your melan A. Well, that's not boding too well if you're worried about melanoma, right? Except for your negative stains include HMB45, SOX10, MIT-F1, and BCL2 may be weak or negative, and there's also a bare F4. Um, molecular t uh, P53 is most commonly mutated, but again, it's very common. These are common lesions. That's not something that you have to do to diagnose actinic keratosis, and you, in fact, don't even have to necessarily do IHC to diagnose actinic keratosis. 
Your differential includes a lot of uh, squamous type lesions, including invasive carcinoma in situ, basal cell carcinoma, as well as uh, melanoma in situ. Think about things that we saw last week with uh, your lichenoid type lesions, even though we didn't cover them, they're all within that spectrum. And you can also think about things like discoid lupus. Often they will treat these with surgical excision with clear margins. Lots of topical therapy that they can use from 5-fluorouracil, diclofenac, and miquimod. Uh, again, that liquid nitrogen comes back, you know, it's good for warts, why wouldn't it be good for this? And they can also use things like photodynamic therapy. But this is relatively emerging and may see some, seem somewhat counterintuitive to treat something that's caused by UV damage with phototherapy. Uh, the prognosis on these is excellent, but again, these are precancerous lesions. So there's progression to, to uh, squam invasive squamous cell carcinoma in 2 to 3%. Often, though, this is low grade. So that is your actinic keratosis. And this is case four. You can pass on the mouse yeah. if you want to, the torch, the rite of passage. see a slide, Kara. We're here for slides, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, so this is the same section. So I would go with this first section because the, the middle one seems understand and the far one seems overstand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how you did that. I don't know. I just find the slides. <laughs> Sometimes you get tissue where it's kind of cut at an angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that because of kind of what we're seeing with it. Well, the basal or layer area looks kind of expanded, but I don't think. Uh -huh. Shh. Yes, it is. Totally is. So you were way ahead of me on that, um, and it is somewhat haphazard in its arrangement, but it looks really different to something that's right beside it, right? Right, yeah, so it's very focal changes. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and but it doesn't look too scary, right? It's a little unusual, but it doesn't look too scary. Mm -hmm. So there is no sign of any atypia or... Well, having, having this much of the basal layer pulled mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. that's atypical. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, like, we don't have weird mitotic figures mm -hmm. and um, anything like that. What do you think about uh, the keratin layer, the superficial yeah, layer? It's uh, very uh, dense. It is, yeah. And uh, larger than usual. There are no Usually, for me, there are spaces in between, but here it's more dense and uh, more red. Yes! Yeah. 
very red. It's, it's like super pink. Yeah. It's and like it, it really lips, wanted so. to be an eosinophil in another life, but you know, yeah. someone pointed at it and went, "You shall be keratin." Except, where are these little dots? These little dark dots. Do you have any idea what those could be? Nuclei, yeah. So then what does that make this? If we have nuclei in the keratin? Yeah. Okay, so what did we just talk about if you have parakeratosis over top of your lesion? That's okay. Repetition is key to everything, right? So having the parakeratosis over top of this area of atypia, mm -hmm. this again is actinic keratosis. Actinic keratosis. But we give it a different name mm -hmm. because it's involving the lip. Oh, actinic chelitis. Yeah. Man, look at these guys go. Okay, so yeah, so this is actinic chelo chelitis, which is also uh, actinic keratosis of the lip. <laughs> Uh, solar chelosis or chelosis at exfoliative and um, much 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 more common in males than females and again our Caucasians and fair-skinned individuals are more commonly affected and again it's actinic keratosis right so it's UV damage it's um, p53 mutations but we also have to think about what kind of um, things can we have going on in the lip that could cause problems. So smoking, chronic irritation, if they have syphilis or herpes viral infections, again, this is very rare causes, but you need to think about these things because anything that causes constant irritation can induce a lot of damage. Where does this occur? Well, right where we saw it, the lower lip in the vermilion zone. Uh, these are dry, so even though they're very erythematic, um, relatively scaly even though otters looked a little more ulcerated healing which is in the bottom so this was probably a recurring lesion in the the case that we had with the picture um, but if they sorry they normally are dry white gray or scaly plaques like we have in the picture above um, so that's what you would normally see initially and then when patients have these recurrent bouts the ulcerated picture that we had in our example would be more what you would expect Okay, on microscopy, they'll either be hyperplastic or atrophic. You know, just to keep things interesting. Um, you'll have atypical keratinocytes, again, uh, in your lower half to lower two-thirds of the epithelium. Again, we have the basilar budding, the nuclear enlargement, hyperchromasia, prominent nu... Am I telling you anything different at this point? No, I'm not. It's <laughs> literally the exact same thing. Um, what is different is that you can... Uh, sometimes see tail angiotasia, which means like multiple dilated vessels in the area. Uh, and why? Because like the lip is very well vascularized. So that's something different to keep in mind. But otherwise, this is exactly what you would see in aka other areas of the body. Uh, so your IC and stuff like that would be the same. Again, you don't necessarily need it. The history gives you enough. The morphology gives you enough. Your differential, however, still includes the same things, but we add in different types of chelitis, okay? Because um, again, all the all the irritation and inflammation can look very similar, um, so that's where you'd want to look carefully at the lesion, carefully at the history to come up with actinic chelitis. Treatment, conservative surgical excision. And why do we say conservative? Uh, people like their lips intact. So we don't want to do a huge wide, wide excision on this. Um, and again, because it is related to, most commonly to UV damage. If you have UV damage in an area of the lip, chances are the rest of the lip has damage, okay? So these aren't always something that even if they go with surgery that they'll chase for negative margins. So that, that's also what they mean by conservative surgical excision. Again, topical therapy, so your five, Fluorouracil, diclofenac, and maquinib, and your liquid nitrogen. Again, excellent prognosis, but precancerous, and progression to squamous cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma in situ is relatively low risk. 
So actinic keratosis, actinic keratosis of the lip. Case five. Mm, okay. This looks like a craterous ulcer nodule type thingy. Yeah, it looks totally gross, it's nasty, right? Nasty. But yeah, it and doesn't sore. Look, yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, well, even from low power, you can see it kind of looks like a Metroid from video <laughs> games. But anyways, besides, <laughs> it, there's this, like, sort of, it's skin, but there's, like, this crater, keratin-filled crater in the center, which is probably what we saw in the gross picture. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, let's take a look, see what's going on. So there's this nodular, you know, crater's area, um... It's filled with keratin. Um, the surrounding, there's a lot of inflammation, a lot of lymphocytes, chronic inflammation. Um, just looking here, we have our granular cell layer. The, mm, there's some, um, what's that term again? Damn, I don't know. Excuse me. <laughs> um, there, what is that term again? Uh, Spongiosis, yes, yeah, spongiosis. yes, that's the term <laughs> <laughs> of the things. There's spongiosis, and it seems to be pinker too. It looks like the cytoplasm, like yes, very pink. Mm -hmm. And it's very pink. and they're, I mean, I feel like they're kind of enlarged. They are. I mean, I'm not going crazy, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. that one kind of looks like a skull. You got the eyes yeah. and like the nose. <laughs> yeah, and like the nuclei just looks, you know, enlarged and a little weird. I'm not seeing like any like real mitotic figures just yet. Right. But like this one has a double nuclei look like. Yeah. That's um, not normal. So there's some atypia there. And then um, I'm going to take a look at the other pieces real quick. Okay. See if, oops. No, that's okay. I do it all the time too. I don't know why it doesn't, but... No, it's because when you're, like, sliding upwards, it hits ah, that. Oh, okay. There's some figured it out. Yeah. I do it all the time. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's that? Oh, that's, uh... Oh, what's, what's that thing called again? I can't remember what that thing was. That is a dyskeratotic cell. Hmm. It's just one cell? Mm-hmm. That is a sign of not happy epidermis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to point it out because that is beautiful. Like that is picture perfect. Uh -huh. And also something you see in this lesion, not a comb. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we established this is dyskeratotic. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, hmm. judging from the rest of the epithelium, this is definitely acanthotic too. Well, and as you pointed out, too, how pink it is. Yeah. Right? The difference? Boop, boop, boop. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's keratinizing. It kind of looks like a Baruka. It looks like, the, it looks like it's kind of steeply, too. You know. It's all keratin. Like. It's all keratin. Yeah. yeah. It's all, it's, I think it's acellular. For the most, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think these are just debris, not really s parakeratosis. I think these are just, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's acellular. Last piece. Think, uh, we hit on the major points. Anything we're missing here? Yes. <laughs> All right. So what is this? What is this? Yeah. It's a karato acanthoma. Yeah. <laughs> karato acanthoma. <laughs> K-A, or K-A, okay. <laughs> also known as crateriform ulcer, or self-healing squamous cell carcinoma, which I think you can imagine why we don't like that name. I like the crateriform ulcer, though. <laughs> it's very descriptive. Again, older adults, again, males more than females, again, Caucasians and light-skinned in, or fair-skinned individuals most commonly affected, related to UV damage. I promise I'm not copying the same slide over and over. <laughs> and these tend to be rapidly growing nodular lesions that occur in sun-exposed areas. They are dome-shaped, as we saw, and they have this scaly um, surface to them. 
they, uh, they have this central keratinous plug or crater, and they can be up to 10 centimeters in, si in size. And at that point, that's a giant keratoagampoma. On microscopy, they're nodular, very well differentiated squamous tumors. Okay, because again, tumor just means proliferative growth. It doesn't necessarily mean malignant. Um, they are symmetric with that central keratin filled crater. Um, so what we were seeing that kind of looked like uh, debris very likely was like lymphocytes, maybe an occasional neutrophil. Um, they may or may not have an infiltrative periphery. Very, very rare lymphovascular invasion, peripheral nerve invasion. Your squamous cells are going to be extremely large. They're going to have these huge open vesicular nuclei with prominent nucleoli and very, very abundant, dense eosinophilic cytoplasm. So we were able to appreciate quite nicely in the same field how um, blue or uh, basophilic the normal epidermis was compared to the eosinophilic cytoplasm of these abnormal keratinocytes. You may or may not see dyskeratotic cells or mitotic figures, but they are often present and we were able to see them in our figure. And that's what the arrowhead is pointing to in the lower picture, is dyskeratotic cells. Um, these are more commonly seen if it, you have a rapidly growing lesion, so keep that in mind. Uh, you will have inflammation, again, eosinophils and neutrophils. Those eos just love to be everywhere in germ. If the lesion is regressing, you can see epidermal atrophy. You won't see atypia, so remember it's regressing, you're not going to see atypia. And you may or may not have fibrosis or scarring left behind, and you may or may not have chronic inflammation. Uh, so these tend to occur not uncommonly within like dark, darkly pigmented tattoos, so that's what the upper picture is showing. Your differential, conventional squamous cell carcinoma, uh, squamous cell carcinoma in situ, and verrucous carcinoma. So a much smaller differential with these but still something you need to pay attention to. These are surgically excised, and we don't always need to completely excise them. Um, so what we see at this point that's missing is we don't have those topical treatments anymore. We don't have like this weird phototherapy thing that we're not sure might work. Um, I shouldn't say weird, but uh, when we have UV-related lesions and then we want to treat that phototherapy, that seems counterintuitive. It's like fire, fighting fire with fire, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a really good saying, so. <laughs> it's like Department of Redundancy Department, maybe. Okay, uh, moving on. Excellent prognosis with these, and majority of cases spontaneously regress. So again, if they, most of them regress on their own, does it necessarily matter if you get the entire lesion out? Not necessarily. The caveat to that is if it's a giant keratoid canthoma, I mean a 10 centimeter lesion regressing on its own, I don't know, uh, subungual or underneath the nail, and immunocompromised patients. We really have a low threshold for wanting things out in immunocompromised patients, but all those things put together, those are all rare instances, okay? So most of these will regress on their own, and not having complete excision is fine in most cases. So this is your keratoacanthoma, or CA, because I like CA. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the Jungle Book. Case six. Oh. That looks painful. This is, I think, back of the ear, right? That's where we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think lower. Oh, think it's lower. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like sternum genitalia. It is, yeah. it is. So it's hyperemic. Yes. Really. It looks bloody as well, probably. Looks in indented. Yeah, indented. <laughs> yeah, it's like an ulcer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, and I'm, I'm sure it would be painful. <laughs> so. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Um, the only thing I would add is that there were, we had a picture of a little kid that had a red lesion around their mouth that kind of looks like this as well last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just me that I'm Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, which one should I do first? Either favorite. or. What's your favorite? I'll start here. Okay. It's, a, it's just levels of the same cut, mm -hmm. so. Uh-huh. So, 
Yeah. It looks thicker. Yeah. And oh, it has like different. a lot of mm. cells with this clear halo around them. Yes. And they are going all the way to the top. So this is more like a pagetoid moment. <laughs> and the cells would be pageant cells. Funny you should say that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because it's so clear and there's so many of them. My question to you though is when we say pagets, we're usually referring to what area of the body? Um memory. Memory. Yeah. So I didn't show you a picture of a breast, did I? Yeah. No. So then what do we call this? Extra memory? Yes, so this is but extra memory pagets. Yeah. It, are they like normally this many? I thought there were fewer. This is a this is no. very really <laughs> obvious. This is this is super <laughs> obvious <laughs> because I try to be nice during these sessions and give uh -huh. you good examples, even if they're hard. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, this is a little bit of an aside for anyone who, you know, isn't party to our lectures during the day. But earlier today when I was talking to you guys about toker cells mm -hmm. in normal breast, so toker cells also are clear, but they'll only be in the basilar layer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why toker cell hyperplasia has to be differentiated from pageants. It looks exactly the same, but you know, for anyone who's going, what's she talking about toker cells? There is something about toker cells in your handout. Mm -hmm. and it kind um, of looks yep. like a low power, there's still some remnant of normal epithelium sort of yeah. streaming through, and these padded mm -hmm. cells are just like pushing it, like yeah. just pushing yeah, apart and just like... This is what know. we call an expansile yeah. lesion, mm -hmm. where it's kind of pushing everything away, it's not infiltrating. Yeah. Um, so it looks very different from like a carcinoma in uh, situ. Right. Yeah. So with the lesion that we had on uh, the dorsal side of the penis mm -hmm. that we saw earlier, that was actually a little more raised. Mm -hmm. It's very red and beefy, and yeah, they have that kind of like wet uh, lesion look, and yes, <laughs> not comfortable. Yeah. They tend to uh, burn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is extra mammary pageants, so a very prolific example for you guys to look at. <laughs> <laughs> this tends to occur in older adults again. I mean, this is a common theme for today, right? Females more than males. So. What do we say whenever there's something that females more than males, except for areas where it makes sense, you know, like GYN? Uh, <laughs> then we want to pay attention to that because most, most of the lesions that we seem to look at, especially bone soft tissue, derm, tend to be male predominant. So this is one that's female predominant. These tend to be very itchy lesions, and that's often the only symptom that you have in the beginning. Now remember, last week we saw a whole bunch of lesions that were really itchy, Mm -hmm. So, you'd want to think about this as well as those. They may or may not be bleeding, oozing, tender, burning, and they can mimic eczema or eczema, depending on how you say it. Grossly, females, so this tends to occur in the vulvar or perianal area. In men, that would be in the scrotum, perineum, or penis. This can also occur in the axilla or the umbilicus. So, you want to think about areas that are really heavily dominant with African glands, okay? Rare exceptions would be things like involving the eyelid or involving the ear, the face, chest, abdomen, basically anywhere else is rare. Um, so again, African rich areas is, is uh, where this tends to occur. The lesions tend to be ring-like and have this moist, erythematous, possibly scaly patches or plaques. So the lesion above that I'm showing you, even though that might look maybe like a burn mm -hmm. or like a severe excoriation, that's what uh, extra mammary pad just tends to look like, that very wet, beefy type lesion. They can also appear like gray-white eczematous patches. They may or may not be pigmented. Uh, and when, uh, so hypo or hyperpigmented macules, and remember, um, macules, patches, all those things have size requirements, so make sure you're uh, up to date on those. They can be ulcerated, and they can be tumorous or more exophytic. And they can be multifocal as well. On microscopy, 
your epithelium is going to be hyperplastic or atrophic. It can be eroded or ulcerated, and the patches cells themselves have very large, round, vesicular nuclei. And vesicular, I mean, that's a term that we use all the time, but what it means is that they have very open-looking uh, nuclei, okay? They have prominent nucleoli, um, the cytoplasm itself, there's lots of it, and it's pale and uh, vacuolated. You won't have intercellular bridges, because remember, seeing those spikes, that's how we know, that, like when we have the spongiosis, um, that's how those keratinocytes are staying together. And you may or may not have intracytoplasmic melanin, just to keep things interesting. There will be lots of mitotic figures, and your very early lesions will just have scattered paget cells in that epidermis, so they won't be re reta re retained. Uh, they won't be retained to the base basal layer of the epidermis. They'll kind of be just scattered throughout the epidermis. Okay. As they get more advanced, you get the case that we saw, where there's these confluent areas of paget cells that really compress the normal squamous cells. This can involve uh, the adenexase, so remember we saw what lesion earlier that doesn't involve adenexase and follicles? I thought it was the one I don't remember. Ah. <laughs> so, what? our actinic keratosis. <laughs> doesn't it involve, or it does not involve? does not involve. So, this may involve the adenexa, mm -hmm. whereas your AKB usually doesn't. There's exceptions to every rule, right? <laughs> but uh, as a general thumb, AK doesn't. Uh, you may or may not see dermal inflammation, and you may or may not see dermal invasion, just to complicate things further. Um, so the pictures are just showing you various levels of scattered paget cells throughout the epidermis. Um, really, the example that we have is a, an extremely wonderful example of confluent paget cells. IHC paget cells are mucin positive. Uh, primary extramammary paget disease will also be CK7 positive. Androgen receptor positive, remember we're looking at areas that are rich in apocrine glands. If it's secondary or as well as your ethelial carcinoma, those will also be CK7 positive, but CK20 positive, CA negative, and uroplacket 3 positive. And if it's related to uh, colorectal cancer, so CRC is colorectal cancer, those are CK20 positive, CK7 negative, CA positive, CDX2 positive. And just telling you that those are the IHCs that you kind of want to look at tells you what you're thinking of in your differential. Remember, sometimes these can be um, melanocytic or, or pigmented, so you also want to think about melanoma in situ. Toker cell hyperplasia, so okay, even though I thought it was a bit of an aside, it actually turns out that that's something you need to think about too. Um, there is benign mucinous metaplasia involving the penis, so again, that's something to think about, as well as your pagetoid lesions like dyskeratosis, reticulosis, and Merkel cell carcinoma. Merkel cell carcinoma, again, being extremely aggressive, so that's something you'd want to rule out for sure. Your treatment is surgical excision, which is the preferred way to treat this with long-term follow-up. And if it's secondary, which secondary means it's related to something else, which is why we have the urothelial carcinoma, the colorectal carcinoma, you want to treat whatever's causing your extramammary Paget's disease, and that will treat the Paget's disease itself. Your prognosis for primary uh, extramammary Paget's, if it's in situ, that's good. Um, and then I go into all this other stuff about, okay, if it's cyclin negative, if it's ECAN hair negative, if it's MUC5 AC positive, if you have high KF67, that's poor prognosis, and uh, also dermal invasion. So all those things make sense. Your secondary Paget's disease is, as like most of our lesions that we talk about, if it's secondary and it's related to something else, then your prognosis is tied to whatever is causing the, the Paget's disease. So, uh, unfortunately, secondary Paget's disease often has a poor prognosis um, related to the primary carcinoma. 
Um, so on the bottom, we have some different examples of IHC. So um, CK20, CK7, uh, that should be CDX2, not CDK2. Uh, and mucic carmine is the bright red. So those aren't giant eosinophils. That's your mucic carmine, which is staining your Paget cells. Because remember, your Paget cells are very large. So that's your extra mammary Paget's disease. Moving on to case seven. So we look in uh, uh, irregular shape. Uh, patch, you would call it? Probably. Patch, like crusted patch? Yeah, it's kind of crusty, kind of scaly. Up crusty, scaly. Uh, Are there ulcers? Or yeah, blood it could be. Yeah, it kind of looks like a scab almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A scab or an escher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just um, yes, very irregular. Very irregular, yeah. And uh, but it's uh, well defined at the end. I would say this is poorly, poorly defined. Yeah. Poorly, poorly defined, yeah. yeah. Simply well, because yeah. you can't really take a marker and go, this is definitely where it is. Because yeah. it kind of fades and you're not like sure if it's still it. there. Mm -hmm. It's like infiltrating. Yeah. 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 It just it looks funny. So here's your slide. Mm, Again, pick whichever <laughs> side you like. Okay. Your middle piece guy, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so at this power, don't zoom in anymore. What do you notice? I will always push you guys to look at low power. Always. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the epidermis is uh, larger than usual. Right, and yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's acanthotic. Acanthotic. And the the basal mm -hmm. layer is this the basal layer? Or it's no? the basement. I think you're higher than the basement. Membrane. Yeah, you're on the basement membrane. And uh, something sticking out, right? You think you see it? Yeah. There's like something. You were. You had your mouse over there. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And also like. Yeah, even the cells. We like had previously. There's something that's right there in the middle, right where your mouse pointer was just a moment ago. Something that's sticking out at you, right? Like mm -hmm. something that's just. <laughs> yeah. Bounce, yeah. There's a trio of them. Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, you get. You guys are really technical. I'm just like, yeah, it's really like purpley blue. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like super like blue gray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we should get on like the berry, like the synonym is all different colors. We'll bring out like a pal color swatch next <laughs> time. <laughs> that's true. That's true. See the world in color. The Royal world of pathology. Blue. Aquamarine, uh, ultramarine. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but okay. But yeah, those. And usually, normals can be size of the needles get they be smaller when we go higher. Yeah. But here for me, it looks like still large for the being the, on the top. So Excellent. And what about the shape of the ones at the bottom? At the bottom. They are atypical. They don't look like a basal for me. They are more spindle. Okay. Like expanded. Expanded. Um, okay. okay, I was just going to say they're big. Yeah, they're big. They're big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, these they're are ginormous. Big, yeah. Yeah. I promise you, there's no trick questions. <laughs> but some of them are big. Some of them maybe aren't oh, as are round. These uh, are like huge. They're huge, yeah. yeah. And uh, pediomorphism, can we call it? Yes, we can. <laughs> Although I usually like to uh, use pleomorphism for um, everyone's probably heard me use this analogy, but when you go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and you see potatoes and you have like gourds, like different type of gourds, whether it's butternut squash or zucchini, so pleomorphism is gourds. 
They're mm -hmm. all different shapes, sizes, colors, whereas potatoes can be slightly different sizes, slightly different shapes, but they're definitely potatoes, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So that's how I look at it, but yeah, this you is kind of... potatoes. It's, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I... I have like a Slavic background, so like mm -hmm. potatoes are a huge part of that, and, and also Irish too. Yeah. So yeah. oh, that's potatoes. a double whammy right there. I know. I love potatoes. <laughs> the spud, the humble spud. I want a pierogi right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I see something else that's interesting up here. That that kind of lighter cell. Right here. Yeah. What do you think is going on there? mitotic figures that high in skin? No, it's higher than Yeah. So the so. skin isn't behaving too well. Right. It's being an individual. <laughs> 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 not in a good way. So, yeah, this is not, not a, a good, good sign. No. It's not no. a good sign? Yeah. Okay. So how about up here? This is like our new favorite thing, right? Mm -hmm. Nuclear. <laughs> yeah, the nuclear here, so... We have paracarditis, yes. <laughs> and, uh, it's like too that much. It's just, big too, you know, yeah. this this skin is just like it's it's laying down, it's given up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like there's any architecture, just like someone went, here's a bunch of cells and just right, smacked yeah. it right onto the thing. <laughs> like, over here, you know, there's, there's, you can't even like say which direction. You could like mm -hmm. flip it around, get rid of, you know, the keratin layer and you'll be like, okay, let's turn it upside down. It looks pretty much yeah, the same. Side <laughs> up. Yeah. Exactly. So this okay. is yeah. yeah. What so do you think it is? Are we atypical? Definitely yeah. Definitely. Okay, yes. Yeah. Alright. Are we cancer? I think this is a cancer like that. Okay. Yes, like, um, so now for the hard question. Are we invasive? Should look this is a noteworthy mm -hmm. case. Yeah. You have so to write a note. This is uh, <laughs> this is not invasive. This is uh, okay, but can you be sure it's not invasive based off what you have here? Well, okay. So let's let's yeah. just take a look at what we do have mm -hmm. because we have to be a good pathologist. Right. <laughs> we look at another section. Uh, no, we can see on that section actually. Yeah, yeah, I see something that I don't like already. <laughs> <laughs> so if we go this way, keep going, keep going. So yeah. what? What's this stuff? Is it the the yeah. yeah. So. So that's our ink. Mm -hmm. And what's on that ink that I was pointing out? Not this stuff. Yeah. This is solar elastosis. What's here? Yeah. yeah. What's that? It's already going in. Right. It's like the same atypical cells go in this direction, reaching the margin that we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've uh, we've decided this isn't atypia. Mm -hmm. We've decided this, this is, is cancer. cancer. Yeah. So. So as was pointed out, this this gets a note. This gets a no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, like let's just say everything looks like what we have here. Um, and they complete their excision like they should, and there's nothing in the excision. So, what do we actually have on this slide? Is this invasive or in situ? Pretend that area doesn't it's exist. Sorry for that area doesn't exist, yeah. so it's in situ. I will accept that, even though we haven't looked at all the tissue. <laughs> That's just for and the sake because of time. I set up a presentation. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> this this is carcinoma in situ, mm -hmm. um, and yes, yeah, so when you have it at ink, any uh, on on these small biopsies, which you can Im imagine, like they do a very small biopsy of like that huge area, mm -hmm. so it's not unusual for you to have. Okay, there's. Uh, like atypia or carcinoma present at the ink. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and what you would say in your note is something like, we cannot rule out mm -hmm. invasive carcinoma because we have that and we have carcinoma at bank. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look invasive there, but we can't say it's not. Right. And even with like, if it's not at the ink, with so little like dermal tissue, like even then, mm -hmm. You would want to put a note in case because you just have so little to work with just in case mm -hmm. yeah or something hidden on a deeper level or something for yeah. the most part though they're not going to leave yeah. this mm -hmm. uh without going back uh, we hope okay. <laughs> yeah they would <laughs> this would probably get a slow mose if it's on the face or something but okay yes this is carcinoma in situ squamous so carcinoma in situ or a squiz. I don't know how you say that acronym. So. <laughs> yes. um, all right, so also known as Bowen disease, uh, squamous intraepithelial neoplasia. Again, it's related to UV damage in most cases, but can also be related to HPV. So we see the overlap with our previous cases. Um, HPV more often in the anal genital areas, and you can also see this in immunosuppressed patients. So we want to thank transplant patients, uh, Gang squamous cell carcinoma in situ. Again, head and neck, sun exposed areas. These are broad scaly patches or plaques with epidermal thickening. May or may not be ulcerated and they may or may not be hemorrhagic. So we're going to see atypical squamous cells extending into the upper levels of the epidermis. It does not have to include the entire thickness of the epidermis, which is something that I thought you had to have when I first did my first derm path rotation and I was quickly corrected. Um, but it's basically you have atypia that is way too much to be explained by anything else. Your basal or keratinocytes are often spared. They were not in our case, but they can be spared. And so you'll see this intact basal layer. That's what's known as the eyeliner sign. Again, our case did not have that. Um, you may or may not see parakeratosis, we did. And when you do, it's often diffuse, including over the adnexa. Again, a little different from our actinic keratosis. Follicular epithelial involvement is typically seen. Another thing that's different from our actinic keratosis, okay? So this stuff likes to go everywhere. Um, your cells are usually markedly enlarged, which means they're huge. They're hyperchromatic, prominent nucleoli, very dense eosinophilic cytoplasm. I would argue that our cytoplasm in our case was a little more amphophilic which is just a fancy way of saying it's slightly purplish. You will see mitotic figures and you will see apoptotic bodies. What your arrow is pointing to in the picture is an apoptotic body. So the closed arrows, the open arrow, I'm not exactly sure because it's right on the edge. Maybe just very large hyperchromatic nuclei. Differential actinic keratosis, invasive squamous cell carcinoma. Well, that's good because we want to make sure, you know, in situ invasive. Padgett's disease and other pagetoid in situ carcinomas. Your treatment is surgical excision, which is the standard and definitive therapy, which means you must know that surgical excision is the therapy for this. If it's on the face, they do most surgery, which is a very slow procedure because they're trying to minimize scarring and how much they're taking off. And they typically will do frozen sections or intraoperative sections as they go along. You can use topical treatments like imiclumod or 5 fluorouracil as well. Your prognosis is excellent in most cases, and there's a relatively low risk of progression to invasive squam cell carcinoma. But again, greater in your immunocompromised patients if they have extensive lesions and um, the way to really think about that is if someone's immunocompromised, they're not going to suddenly become not immunocompromised. If someone has extensive lesions, they're not going to suddenly not have extensive lesions. They may be very poor surgical candidates for those reasons. It's kind of like whenever we have lesions that will be uh, like diffusely dispersed throughout the body, you're not going to try and cut all of those out because that's just impossible and those are usually related to genetic conditions. In this case, not so much, but the patterns are very similar, so you always want to kind of associate those things together, at least for why they do things, why they don't do things. So squamous cell carcinoma in situ or bowel disease, and 
this. So yeah, I did one for this too. <laughs> okay, so again, uh, the colors of the writing match the colors of the arrows, and I try to put them on the features exactly so that you're not like, wait, where's, where's this, where's that? Um, I don't see my orange arrow for inflammation, but there's inflammation kind of everywhere in these lesions, just kind of sp sprinkled around. Um, so if you're looking like these little guys, super dark, mm -hmm. those are lymphocytes. Mm -hmm. Lymphocytes look like someone took a marker and went, boom, there's your nucleus. Okay. Now we're... Well, it looks like an assertive lesion of yeah. someone's lip, it looks like. Maybe. I honestly had a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, did I put the same picture in twice? No, it's not. It's different. But it's another <laughs> lip lesion, looks ulcerated, goes in a little. Does it does. It, it kind of looks more like is this wet look, but not really a squamous cell ulcer wet look, but it looks kind of like smooth. Okay. If we got, ooh. Okay, it is so. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Well, you know, we don't usually get the fresh specimens. We get it fixed and stuff. Oh, but yeah, something that looks like, what are these things? What the heck are, did we flip the specimen? Why is it down here? <laughs> That's not supposed this to be. This is not tangential. <laughs> this is not. It, it's a very weird tangential piece. If so it you was can there. see how well yeah. oriented all that is so on the edge. It's like. Boom, disconnected. And then there's these new nests. So this is invasive. This is invasive. And look in, look at that. Look at these like ugly looking cells. These yeah. These ugly looking cells. And it's not even keratinizing. And I would say this would be probably, I mean, you could still recognize them as a, like squamous cells. Mm -hmm. So, but their nuclei are a little like irregular. So this would probably be moderately differentiated. Um, it's best not a first. That's a pearl, yeah. So keratinizing, invasive, invasive, moderate differentiated squamous cell. Carat I never remember the order, but it's like <laughs> you had to put those elements together. Invasive, keratinizing, squamous cell carcinoma, moderately, moderately differentiated. differentiated. <laughs> yes. Okay. So most cancers, like we learned that they have these very irregular edges. Um, they tend to be very angulated for skin and invasive squamous cell carcinoma, what you want to look at is what was already pointed out. So where we normally would expect this to be the bottom, when you start seeing, here's more keratin and squames, here's more keratin, it's going the wrong way. Okay, so even though it's rounded, which it is, mm -hmm. and there's no real clearly identifiable single cells that I can see right now, uh, <laughs> I, it's very inflamed, which yeah. I think makes it difficult too. Um, but when you see that kind of squamous cell differentiation, keratin, that deep in the skin, that is invasive. Okay, because it shouldn't normally do that. There are areas in this that look angulated, but I'm telling you, you'll very often have examples that look very well circumscribed and, <laughs> and rounded. Um, but when you see it this low in the dermis, um, and just looking at the shape, it's just there's no way a tangential piece will look, it will mm -hmm. give you this thing, yeah, especially yeah. when you have this on the side as a comparison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is, this is what's nice about this case is that you do have the relatively normal looking epi epidermis on the sides to compare to. Mm -hmm. um, what you can see is like all of this has that blue gray solar elastosis. And a lot of tumors tend to be very inflamed. So this one is no exception. It has a lot of lymphocytic background. There's probably some plasma cells. Mm -hmm. There might even be some EOs, because why not? <laughs> um, those are red cells. But there's probably going to be an EO somewhere. Uh -huh. um, but really, it's not so much the dermal process. It's it's the ing ingrowth. Those are red the cells. Red cells yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah, there's an EO, but it looks like it's in a capillary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Um, so this is invasive squamous cell carcinoma, or just squamous cell carcinoma. Maybe an eel here. Maybe it's in a cell. capillary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't Anywho, help. But okay. you see this much atypia and stuff, there, there's no denying there's that no this denying. is carcinoma. There's no denying. This is just way too... Yeah. Okay. So, also...
also known as sarcomatoid carcinoma, acanthotic squam cell carcinoma, Burkitt's carcinoma, epidermoid carcinoma, keratoacanthoma, <laughs> very well differentiated. I'll stick with squam. Uh, <laughs> again, adults, but where we also saw elderly, the age range really goes from your mid-30s to your mid-90s and up, okay? Um, males more than females, but only slight predominance, okay? Um, again, related to UV damage, chronic inflammation and in wounds. So where we were talking last week about uh, stasis dermatitis and these uh, chronic wounds on the legs that don't heal, on the feet, this is why they want to keep track of those. This is why they will biopsy those wounds. Also, we want to think about patients who previously had radiation therapy. Radiation therapy tends to always make things a little more aggressive, so you want to keep that in mind. Hey, look, our friend HPV is back. Low grade is verrucous. High grade, you think about immunosuppressive patients. Grossly, not different from anything else. Head, neck, sun exposed areas, unless you're looking at a chronic wound, then it would be the site of the chronic wound. These are slow growing lesions that tend to be either papules, nodules, or plaques. They don't really like to, you know, be defined into a, one box, so they kind of go with everything. They may be ulcerated or hemorrhagic, and if they involve the ear, there may be pain associated with that. Remember, there's a lot of nerves going into the ear. There could be hearing loss or discharge from the ear. So these could be things that could be missed and maybe thought to be like otitis media or otitis externa. There, there may or may not be an association with actinic keratosis. Remember, we said actinic keratosis is precancerous or squam cell carcinoma in situ, Allen disease, which we just saw. On microscopy, not too surprisingly, there are typical squamous cells extending into the dermis. These can either be in nests, which means like well-defined areas, sheets, which are just a sea of atypia, or cords, which cords are kind of like uh, strands of atypical cells. You may or may not see keratin and keratin pearls, so don't bank on that. You may or may not see squamous eddies. Uh, you can have epidermal attachment, but not always. As we saw in our case, there were areas that looked detached. Now, if you went deep enough into your blocks, you may see where they attach, okay? Um, you will have intracellular bridges or desmosomes, because remember, this is a squamous lesion. Those are still keratinocytes. They're just malignant. Um, the cells will be markedly enlarged, as we saw. Again, the vesicular chromatin, prominent nucleoli, and that dense eosinophilic cytoplasm. So you can also appreciate too, like why our keratoacanthoma, or well-differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, was in that list. You will have mitotic figures, and they may be atypical. They may be numerous. You will have apoptotic bodies. Um, so having the apoptotic bodies along with your mitoses, that's what kind of clues you in that this was squamous differentiation if you don't have keratin, okay? Um, and as with everything, so lower grade, more well differentiated, it's going to have more keratin. Your poor, so again, here is quick little, how do I look at things like squamous cell carcinoma? Well differentiated is, I know that this is squamous cell, I see keratin. Moderately differentiated is, I'm pretty sure this is squamous cell, I still see maybe some keratin. Poorly differentiated is, I don't know what I'm looking at, it's very blue, there is no keratin. Sarcoma. It could be sarcoma, it could be melanoma, it could be Merkel cell. So, um, and that's what happens. And it, it, it is somewhat intuitive, but I kind of like to spell things out. Okay, that's just how I am. <laughs> uh, your immunohistochemical stains, so keratins. Again, keratins are lost in your poorly differentiated tumors. A lot of your markers are lost in poorly differentiated tumors. That's why they're poorly differentiated. Um, you can see P63, and you may or may not see bimentin, and that's all we're going to say about bimentin. We're moving on. Negative stains. S100, SOX10, MART1, MELAN-A, HMB45, CV10, CD68, CD99, actin, desmond, Barrett F4, uh, androgen receptor, and your protoplanar D240. So basically, everything that's in your differential, all those things, except for keratins, because uh, your keratins uh, will be positive in keratoacanthoma, and um, can be 
uh, positive and basal cell as well. But the overall picture, <laughs> the overall picture um, is that if you're worried that this is a melanoma, your melanoma stains are negative. If you are worried that this is some sort of like lymphoma or something like that, those stains are negative, okay? Um, your treatment, again, your standard and definitive therapy is surgical excision, most surgery for facial lesions. Now that I probably did actually copy from squamous cell carcinoma site too because it's literally the same thing. Again, you can use topical immunomodulators or chemotherapy. You can use radiation if surgery is not curative. Prognosis is excellent in most cases. Um, superficial, well differentiated, have good prognosis. Again, that kind of makes sense. The better well differentiated, it, the better behaving something is. Um, it's for lesions that are deeply invasive, so things that would be hard to get a good surgical margin on. If they're poorly differentiated, um, if they're one of the subtypes that tends to be aggressive, if they're involving the lip or ear, all those things confer poor prognosis because again, they're not easy to cut out. Um, or they might, the patients might actually be at a really high stage by the time they present. Uh, so those are all things you want to think about. Hey, look, there's another one. Uh, and this time we have all the colors that go with all the arrows. So um, just something else for you guys to look at. Uh, quick little pictures of whether things are well, moderately, or poorly differentiated. So you can kind of see like, Looks like squame, still squame, what the heck, okay? Um, and that's pretty much how your well to poorly differentiated goes in any type of lesion. Um, if it's easily recognizable as something, those tend to be well differentiated. Okay, so moving on to case nine and 10. Case nine and 10 go together. Okay. So it does look like, like it's, I know it's not the same, but it does look like stuck on kind of. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, but it's not that dark to be fog. Mm -hmm. And it's like a small papule, like, yeah. Module. I Does it look you? scaly or like a scab or is it smooth? It looks smooth. Yeah, it's kind of cute, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like all right, you want the next one, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is case nine. Oh. Hey. Wow. There's so it's many. It's so cute, right? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so many nests there. Like so what's positive. what's the most prominent color on this? Blue. Ooh. Dark. Blue. Purple. This is blue. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll let you say purple because purple's the best color. <laughs> uh, but so it's, it's like it's very dark, right? Very actively. Okay, now I'll let yeah. you zoom in. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so, oh, it's really distinct. It's almost a range too. Yeah, it's so, it's, it's kind of beautiful. <laughs> it is, isn't so, it? This is more like a biophysic kind of appearance. Like, this is more like columnar, like yeah. palisading. Yeah. Okay, palisading. it is palisading, yes. Yeah. So palisading means that it goes around the periphery, yeah. almost like a fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so obvious in all of them. And the middle is like more like polygonal cells. So it's like biophysic. And then there are so many of them. <laughs> so many. Yeah. And they are all. Who is this? That's just a. Like That's just some keratin. Yeah. Yeah, it's attached to the surface, so we're not worried about that. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the epidermis? I mean, we are in skin. What do you think about that? Uh, kind of looks okay. It does look okay. Yeah. That's because it's it like is I okay. Mm -hmm. pathology. No pathology. Okay. Maybe some slight spongiosis because there's always some yeah. there's spongiosis. Always spongiosis. Yeah. It's, it's like everywhere. Uh, well, okay, in all fairness, for anyone who's going to be like, oh, there's not always spongiosis, it can be an artifact. <laughs> um, so, but this is, for the most part, for our purposes, unremarkable epidermis. Yeah. Okay. There is something else going on with the lesion mm -hmm. um, in regards to how it's kind of sitting in the tissue. So do you notice all these areas? 
Yeah. It's like separated from it. Yeah. So this lesion loves to do that. And there's even some areas like this. It's like retraction? Retraction, yes. And some areas like this. Hmm. Do you see that? How it's like here we have the collagen that's nice. Yeah, like the stroma and then And then this kind of looks more blue. Mm-hmm. This kind of mixoid. Yeah, type mixoid change. Yeah, changes. So stromal mixoid changes. Yeah, but just right around the lesion. Uh-huh. And the retraction and the palisading and it's super blue. Basal cell carcinoma. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like so obvious, like from palisading. What kind of basal cell carcinoma? This is where our senior can help. Yeah, Wait. It's the um is it the nodular form, I think is the term. Yes. It's like nodular infiltrating and so this is predominantly nodular, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's all these nodular type arrangements, right? Like they kind of look like uh, balls of tumor that mm -hmm. are just kind of everywhere. So this is nodular basal cell carcinoma. But I would have accepted just basal cell carcinoma. Okay, so we don't get a break. Uh -huh. We go straight to case 10. So you can sure. pass on the, the mouse if you want to. Mm -hmm. And case 10 is our last case. Mm. I know, isn't it gorgeous? So what's the most prominent color? Blue. Yes. <laughs> blue. So and blue. So blue. Now it's the what's up, what's down, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can help you out a little bit because this is up. This is up, yeah. This is, that's at the dermis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is spongiosis, yes. And this is tangential. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it makes it look deeper than it actually is. Mm -hmm. But okay. Are we worried about the epidermis? Mm -hmm. uh, not for like, other parts. No, there's nothing other than the spongiosis. No. There's something, but I'll let it slide. Okay. Not here. Not here. If you go a little bit this way, what happens to our epidermis? Mm. Over there, all that pink stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, going, uh, it's more uh, ulcerated or yeah. collagen fibers. Yeah, it's gone, right? It's gone, yeah. So this is probably an ulcerated lesion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you can look at the cells to your heart's content and tell me all about them. <laughs> I would say this kind of has more of like a corded appearance. Mm -hmm. So you can see almost where it's like they're like two lines kind of going through, but yeah, they're they're weaving in and out and it's really hard to tell what's going on. And yeah, hyperchromatic. Very. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about these uh, there's some vacuoles. Vacuoles, yeah. Yeah. And do we see any more of that sort of mixoid stuff? That sort of blue-gray stuff? Yeah, we see it in between. We do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so cells don't look normal. There's a lot of them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of them. Okay, does this look at all like the previous lesion that we yeah, had? Yeah, it looks like it. It looks like that, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I probably just gave you a different variant, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's because yeah, I did. It looks did. like it, but <laughs> it's not at least a bit organized and, and healed. Right. Like yeah, here the, you can uh, see palisading. the palisading, mm -hmm. but it's very focal. Because really? sometimes, like, well, I shouldn't say sometimes, what often happens with basal cell is they like to mix subtypes. Again, they don't want to be put into one box of, I'm just nodular, or I'm just infiltrative. They're like, you know what, I'm nodular and infiltrative. I'm superficial too, deal with that. 
Um, so they will do all kinds of things. Um, this one also has some cystic type areas. So there's, again, lots of different subtypes, but recognizing the cells, um, the epidermis um, being relatively benign, you, will, you can have areas where it will attach and uh, basal cell carcinomas like to ulcerate, right? Mm -hmm. So we're actually yeah. seeing the ulceration here. Right, right here. Good job. You know the pieces or whatever? They all look alike. They all kind of, yeah, yeah. look alike. It's just some of them have even less epidermis, so mm -hmm. it's harder then to tell right. where you're supposed to look. But and this piece has epidermis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is your basal cell yeah. carcinoma. Again, very common, also known as basal cell epithelioma, trichoblastic carcinoma, and uh, don't use trichoblastic carcinoma because it's not accepted and it's actually discouraged from use. So I put it in there more as a disclaimer, as a warning. Okay, it is the most common cancer overall when skin cancer is included. It accounts for 70% of primary cutaneous malignancies, so that's better than a coin toss. It occurs in older adults, men more than women, but again, slight predominance. It is extremely rare in children. So if it occurs in a child, you want to consider genetics. And as most of these lesions, Caucasians and fair-skinned individuals are privy to having more of these. It tends to occur in head and neck, and that's most of your cases, but it can also occur on the trunks and shoulders. These are papular, plaque-like, or nodular lesions. They tend to be pearly or translucent with telangiectasia, so again, those dilated vessels. They're variable in size, and they can be either a few millimeters or several centimeters in size, and our large lesions are the ones that tend to ulcerate and crust, so that's what we were seeing was that serum crust. Some of them can even be pigmented, and that's actually seen more often in patients with African or Asian ethnicity. Um, so the example that I have on the right is kind of a combination of our first and second case actually for the subtypes. On microscopy, so you're going to have nodules, nests, infiltrative cords, or any combination thereof. You may or may not see ulceration or serum crusting. Our case had serum crusting. They are very small basalid cells, which means they're very blue. They are often enlarged with hyperchromatic nuclei and can have inconspicuous or small nucleoli and scant eosinophilic cytoplasm. Peripheral palisade is also a feature that you want to look for, so again, that's where you have like that picket fence lining of the areas of the tumor. Stromal retraction or cleft artifact is also very common, so that's what uh, the top right picture is showing you with the open arrows. You may or may not see mucous material in the stroma. We actually saw that in both cases. Um, you will see mitotic figures. You will see apoptotic figures as well. Multiple variants. So what does multiple variants mean? It's in your handout. Stains. So this is where that bear F4 comes in. BCL2, P53, your keratins, I promised you those would be positive in basal cell carcinoma. Your KI67 should be high and P63 can also be positive. For molecular, these, if we're looking at children, so again, I said these are rare in children. If that occurs, this is a patch one mutation associated with Gorlin syndrome. There can be P53 mutations, SOX9 mutations, BM, um, BMI1, eyes and the ones look very similar, Vax and RMRP. The differential includes a lot of things that we looked at today, but uh, some of the things that you want to also consider would be follicular neoplasms or neoplasms involving the hair, hair follicles and hair shafts, Merkel cell carcinoma because again it is very similar in appearance to basal cell carcinoma and it's very aggressive as well as sebaceous carcinoma. The treatment, standard, Surgical excision. We're not surprised by that at this point. And most surgery, again, for facial lesions. Prognosis with basal cell is usually excellent and is often cured with excision. And uh, I put in there, see handout for more info because it definitely gets more complicated than that. And the risk of metastasis with basal cell carcinoma is less than a 20th of a percent. So that's estimated, but super low. 
Uh, and yeah, that's probably what, well, I wouldn't write that on the test, but I'd be like, what's the lowest number they have on there? And that's what you pick. Um, so again, we have some IHCs to show you. There's um, BCL2, P53. The bare F4 really is a nice thing um, because you see how intense it is. And your KI67, again, would be really high. Um, the pictures are on the bottom were ones that were on the previous slide, and again, just showing you multiple variants of beta cell carcinoma. And here's your quick glance. So a lot less to show you on these, but those are really the most important things to look at for basal cell carcinoma. And with that, that's the end of the cases for this week. We have 21 cases from Durham non-melanocytic lesions. Um, at some point, I guess I will do a video for the challenge cases as well, um, since we did that last week, and it seems at least in the last 12-ish hours to have been well received. <laughs> Um, if you have any questions, again, please put them below in the comments. You can send me a, a DM or message on Twitter as well. Um, if you like this video, please hit like. If you aren't subscribed to us already, please hit subscribe so you're notified of all the new material coming your way from Pathology. And thank you very much.